Be in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed the fruit of thy Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. <clears throat> Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Today I'd like to talk about this saint. One of you know who this saint is? This is, any of you know? His name is the Curie of Ours, or Saint John Maria Vianney. He lived in the 1800s. He's very famous, especially for his work in the confessional. He spent from 13 to 18 hours a day in the confessional, hearing confessions and reconciling souls to God. What an incredible gift he had. He had people waiting to go to confession for days, traveling all over France, traveling all over Europe to come to this holy man of God, someone like Padre Pio. And he lived into his 70s. This is the portrait of the Curie of Ars, St. John Maria. VNA. Guess what I have here? <clears throat> Can you see it? Guess what this is? Any of you know? This is a relic. This is a relic of the Curie of ours. You can see it almost touching you. <laughs> nice and big. It's a relic of, you can see Jean Maria Vianney. A relic of the Curie of ours. Now, maybe you know this. But a relic, there are three types of relics. <clears throat> there is what is called a first-class relic. Then there is a second-class relic. Then there's a third-class relic. The first-class relic <clears throat> would be this. I'm going to show you a first-class relic. Are you ready? Tell me you think, what the heck is Father Broom doing? Well, this this is a for, this is a third class relic because a third class relic is something that a saint actually touched. Some of you might know that I was touched by you see the man in the background? In the background you can see John Paul II with Cardinal Wachinski. That was when John Paul II was elected in 78. I was ordained to the priesthood in the year 1986, uh, May 25th, which was the solemnity of the Blessed Trinity. In the course of the celebration, John Paul II, you can see behind, behind us, came up and he placed his, he placed his hands on my head. So John Paul II was a saint. So he, by placing his hands on my head, I am a living, walking, first-class relic. What do you think about that? For that reason, my barber, when my barber cuts my hair, she always, she saves some of my hair because my hair is a relic. 
I think you'd probably want to be my barber. Probably you would be. Be able to encase some locks of my hair, and that would be a third class relic. <coughs> so that's a that's the third class relic. The second class relic would be the garment. It would be like a piece of a garment of the saint. It might be part of his uh, shirt, maybe part of his religious habit, uh, might be something, part of a shoe, something that he actually wore. That's the, that's the, the second class relic. And here, as I just mentioned, you can see it, here is a first class relic. If you can look very closely, it says Juan Vianney, Juan Marie Vianney, if you can see it. Juan, can you see it? Juan Vianney. So this is actually, it's, a, it's actually the part of the, a little piece of the bone of the Curie of Ars. I have this in my possession. I have a little case here, and I open up the case, and I place this relic in the case because having a first-class relic of a saint is a real, a real blessing. <clears throat> so what can we say, then, in honor of this saint, the Curie of Ars? You know, I think his key to sanctity, what it was, is that he arrived at the city of Ars after the French Revolution, and he uh, he was sent to an out-of-the-way parish, which is called Ars, and the bishop reluctantly ordained him because the the Curie of Ars had a lot of he had a lot of struggles with his studies. Uh, he had a lot of struggle, but he was ordained. So the bishop didn't want to place him in a prominent place. So he put him in an out-of-the-way place in a rural parish called Ars. And when the Curie of Ars, when he arrived at Ars, here's another portrait of him. When he arrived at Ars, very few people practiced the faith. Uh, people, they were um, cursing. There were a lot of bars there. There was a lot of dancing, <clears throat> a lot of immorality, a lot of uh, basically religious indifference, which the people had, most of them had just abandoned the practice of the faith. Do you know what the Curie of Ars did? He didn't give up, but he spent, see what he's doing there, he spent long hours in prayer. He spent long hours in prayer in front of the Blessed Sacrament. And he would say, Lord, do all you possibly can, but I beg you, I beg you from the depths of my heart, I beg you, save my parishioners, save their souls. So with tears and long prayers and vigils, the Curie of Ars implored the Lord for the salvation of his parishioners. It's like Jesus said, ask and you will receive, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be open to you. Whoever asks, receives. Whoever seeks, finds. Whoever knocks, the door will be open. So he spent long hours, evenings, in prayer. Another thing he did was, Jesus said in the gospel, after he cast out the devil from this individual, he said, some devils can be cast out only by prayer and fasting. So the Curie of ours decided to add to his prayer fasting. So he would spend, spend long hours without eating. And then a typical day in the regimen of the life of this uh, great man of God was he would eat a potato. Maybe you've heard 
An apple a day keeps the doctor away. A potato a day keeps the devil away. <laughs> maybe you'll like that one. But he would eat maybe one or two potatoes a day. So he prayed and he fasted. He prayed and he fasted. And another thing he would do was when he arrived at ours, the rectory had some elements what he thought were were of luxury. So he got rid of his bed. He got rid of his bed, and he decided that he was going to he was going to sleep uh, not on the bed, but he would sleep on the floor. While he was sleeping on the floor, the devil would come to visit him, and the devil would insult the curie of ours. He would insult him with sarcasm and say, and call him a potato eater. You potato eater, what are you doing? So the devil would taunt him. The devil would mock him. The devil made fun of the curie of ours. <clears throat> he did something else. And I'm not going to recommend that you do this. You, you should all have a good spiritual director. You, my friends, who are following me online, you should all try to have a good spiritual director because we all have blind spots. We all have areas that we can't see clearly. Unless we have a spiritual director, we cannot direct ourselves. As John the Cross says, he who has his own, himself as a director has an idiot as a follower. We cannot direct ourselves because we all have these blind spots. But what he would do was he would take a whip and he would actually strike himself in the back. That's called the scourging or sometimes it's called the, the discipline. He would do it to such, a, to such an extent that there would even be blood in his walls. He did this all. Why? Because... The Curie of Ars, the Curie of Ars, St. John Vianney, had a great love for God, <clears throat> a great love for God. He wanted to love God with all of his heart, mind, soul, and strength. He wanted to love God totally, unreservedly. And it's a motivation for us. We're only going to be happy in our lives when we try to love God with all of our heart, mind, soul and strength we give ourselves to the lord unreservedly that's where we'll truly find our happiness in letting god love us and loving loving god but what is how do we show do we really love god if we love god we should love what god loves what does god love god loves the human person God loves the salvation of souls. So the Curie of ours, loving God, love what God loves, and God loves the salvation of souls. For that reason, St. Thomas Aquinas says, defines love as such. Love is willing the good of the other. I repeat, this is St. Thomas Aquinas now. Love is willing the good of the other. What is the greatest good of of the human person. What do you think? What is the greatest good of the human person? It is the salvation of his immortal soul. So for that reason, the Curie of ours would spend only about three to four hours at night sleeping. And we'd get up about, he would get up about midnight. And he'd head over to the church. And he'd spend time in prayer. Then you have, after he was a priest for several years, he had long lines of people. And I say long, long lines of people that were outside waiting, outside the church waiting for him to come in so that he would hear their confessions. And he spent, as I said, 13, 14, 15, sometimes as much as 18 hours a day in the confessional. I've spent as many as 12 or 13 hours. But try to imagine being in your closet um, as stuffy, asphyxiating or cold closet. Imagine you're sitting there for 15 hours just listening to problems. How on earth could he do that? How on earth could the cure how on earth could this man do that? How? It's because 
he loved God. He loved God, and he loved what God loves. That is the salvation of souls. So I'd like to do before I conclude, this is a little booklet from Pan Tan Publishers. It's the thoughts of the Curie of Ours. What I'd like to do, I'd like to just read one of his thoughts for your meditation. And then what I'd like to do, I'd like to give all of you a special blessing of the Curie of Ours taken from this first class relic hoping that all of you will pray for priests, hoping that all of you will go to confession, hoping that all of you will bring your family members to confession, hoping that all of you will make good confessions, hoping that all of you will maybe one day in your life make a general confession of your whole life, hoping and praying that all of you will have a very good year, that this year, 2020, will be a 2020 spiritual vision, that all of you will be able to grow in your love for God. So let's take let's take one of the counsels of the Curie of Ours. <clears throat> Given that we're in the we're still in the Christmas season in which we're meditating upon the joyful mysteries, I'd like to <clears throat> read and briefly comment a sermon from the Curie of Ours on the feast day of the purification which would also be the presentation of the child Jesus in the temple. Listen, listen to the words of the Curie of Ars. Listen to his words. This is from one of his wonderful homilies. Simeon gave back Jesus to his mother. He was only suffered to keep him for one moment only allowed to keep him for one moment, Simeon. But we are far happier than Simeon. Why? We may keep him always, if we will. In communion, he comes not only into our arms, but into our hearts. What a beautiful reflection of the Curie of Ars. I will give you a summary of that homily in my own words. The Curie of Ars was saying this, that when Jesus was brought into the temple by Mary and Joseph, and this is the fourth joyful mystery, which is the presentation, when Jesus was brought into the temple, what did you have there? Simeon, as well as Anna, but Simeon was waiting for Jesus for a long time. And he took Jesus into his arms and said, Lord, now you can let your servant go in peace because my eyes have seen the light to all the people, a light for all the people. And he said, and he'll be a sign of contra contradiction. Then he turned to Mary and said, and a sword of sorrow pierced through your heart so that the thoughts of many will be revealed. What is the Curie of ours saying in his homily? He is saying that, Simeon was privileged to see Jesus for a very short time. He held him in his arms. He blessed God. He said, now you can let your servant go in peace. He was saying, now you can let me die, because now I have seen the light for all the peoples. I've seen the, salvia. I've seen the Savior. What about you? What about you? If you go to Mass... You know, you go to Mass on Sundays. But if you go to Mass during the week, you can go to daily Mass if you like. You not only are able to look at Jesus, you're not only able to hold Jesus, but you're able to take Jesus into your hearts. Through Holy Communion, Jesus Christ enters into the very depths of your soul. What an extraordinary privilege that all you people have. And you really, and I say really, you can invite Jesus Christ to come into the very depths of your soul, into the very depths of your heart, every day that you want. You are God's spoiled children. You indeed are God's spoiled children. You are. So you ought to be thankful for the fact that you are God's spoiled children. So, as I promised, that was just one of the many beautiful reflections of the Curie of ours, and you can get this 
from 10 publishers, the thoughts of the Curivars from 10 publishers. And I like, as I promised, I'd like to give all of you a very special blessing, a very special blessing in honor of the Curivars. You look right there once again, you see the first class relic of the Curie of ours. Can you see it there? Can you? The first class relic of the Curie of ours. So let me give you that blessing. The Lord be with you. May, all God, may Almighty God bless all of you through the intercession of the Curie of ours, that you'll pray for the church, you'll pray for the priests, you'll pray for your confessor, You'll make good confessions. You'll bring other people to confession. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is a first class relic of the Curie of ours. So may God bless all of you. You pray for me, and I will pray for you. And one day we'll be with the Curie of ours in heaven, glorifying the Father the Son, the Holy Spirit for all, for all eternity. So it's been great to be able to be with you. Invite your friends to see, to see this little presentation, share this with others. So let's try, my friends, to preach the word of God to the whole world using these modern means that God has given to us at our disposition. God bless all of you, and we'll be talking to you again in a very short time. Amen.